When working with other individuals, especially adults, it can be really tempting for a facilitator to try to showcase their own expertise and, and their, their own ideas. How can we make sure everyone's heard, Kelly? Well, to be honest, Ben, it's usually your type A or your confident leaders who are volunteering to be facilitators. And it's important for the facilitator to learn how to stand on neutral ground and listen to the group dynamics. So we've really got to make sure that we don't just listen, we also need to make sure that we have all the ideas shared from everybody who's included. That's right, and facilitators have to support all the ideas that are shared. So the facilitator is going to be probing the quiet voices around the table, but also learning to manage the dominant voices that might be there as well. But the most important thing for a facilitator to realize is how to listen strategically, but then clarify all of the ideas that the group shares. The facilitator's listening includes our eyes and ears. Expert facilitators often develop a knack for reading the room. The body language, the tones, and the subtext of what is being said is often taken into account. Positive contributions need to be identified and encouraged as much as negative behavior identified and adjusted. One thing to look for is supporting behaviors versus blocking behaviors. Team members who support each other will make sure that each person shares ideas. Often, folks who are stuck on their one idea will try to block others from being heard or minimize the importance of other ideas. Another thing that can happen is offering ideas versus dominating and withdrawing behavior. People who share productive ideas allow for suggestions without minimizing others. Others may dominate by trying to take over the group process or steering it in their own direction. Some might withdraw, especially if someone else begins to dominate. With the group, the balance between harmonizing and being a devil's advocate needs to be found. Folks who harmonize try to reconcile opposing ideas and find common connections. Devil's advocates can be counterproductive if they are being difficult, well, for the sake of just being difficult. Ben talked about listening and adjusting for group behaviors. However, it is important to also get the best ideas on the table. Here is where the facilitator needs to clarify these ideas by prompting group members through neutral, focused questions. So as a facilitator, it's important not to be too directive, but to probe for information with questions that are neutral. So you might want to address the group and say, is this clear enough? Or you may want to say something like, so are you saying, in order for them to paraphrase what they meant. Or you may want to say, do we all understand? So one part of clarifying ideas is to make sure that you're getting all of the ideas out in the open. And you can do this a number of different ways. One way is to perhaps getting somebody else in the group to record the ideas. And that frees you up as a facilitator to focus on your role. This may allow you to realize just who hasn't really been heard on the team yet. So sometimes using a strategy like going around the table allows you to get all of those opinions heard. So often we may think we are clear as a facilitator, but sometimes others in the room may have a different interpretation of what was really said. So as a facilitator, we can make sure that the terms and concepts are clear to everybody. It's important to make sure that the team is avoiding jargon. Another thing you want to be aware of is maybe defining abbreviations that are being used around the table. And also, we need to discern if the same term has maybe different meanings for different people. For example, if we use the term rich task, does everybody around the table really have a common understanding of what a rich task is? Sometimes, ideas may even appear to be an outlier, but a facilitator may find that upon further exploring, it may fit with the ideas. But this just may take time for the group to establish on their own. Kelly, your ideas really remind me of a group that I worked with. There were some really dominant voices, but also some really good quiet leaders that weren't being heard. So Ben, how did you deal with the dominant voices, but at the same time remain a neutral facilitator? It was difficult because we wanted everyone to be heard. And the dominant voices sometimes have some really great ideas that you want out but it's also important to know when we need to stop and move on. So when did you know when it had to stop though? And how did you transition to moving on? 
One key indication that I had used in that group was when it became repetitive. When it became a rant and we had kind of went around the circle a couple times. So what we did is we went around the table and we gave each person a little bit of time to speak. That allowed the dominant voice to be heard and be listened to, but also let the quiet leaders emerge. 